Okay everyone, welcome back to my channel. Uh, today we're going to do a very simple painting. It's just uh, trying to capture a bit of light within the picture, um, within, the, within the painting. Um, these sailing boats on a beach basically. Um, we've got, we're going to use a relatively limited palette. We've got three browns, three blues, uh, quinacrinone purple, uh, there's alizarin crimson, so that, and, and there's some lemon yellow, some raw sienna, burnt sienna, burnt umber, ultramarine, sorry, ultramarine, cerulean blue, and cobalt blue. I'm not necessarily going to use them all, but uh, that's the tools, that's, that's the things we've got there to use. Look at this, look, look, look at the mess I'm in already, I'm just picking up a tube of paint. Gee. Right then, so let's get stuck straight in. So we're going to keep this very simple and we're just going to block in the big shapes with colour to start with. Okay, so what we're going to do is just mix up a little bit of uh, cobalt blue to over the corner here, like so. Cobalt blue, and to that I'm going to mix a little bit of cerulean blue, just on the edge like that. And I want to keep the... Uh, Sky. What I'm then going to do is take me Mr. Bottle and just give me a sheet of light spray just to help the paint move a little bit. You know, I don't necessarily I don't do that so much when I'm outside painting, but uh, if I'm indoors, yeah, we might put a cloud here. Maybe there's not one in the picture, but maybe well, I don't know. Let's have a look. Ready? Let's go. So we're just going to block in our sky. See that that dampening the paper. Paper. If we want to put some clouds in, by dampening the paper first, we get a nice soft edge around the cloud. Nothing too harsh. Does a lot of the work for you. I'm just going to add a little bit of uh, lizard crimson to that, just to grey it and sort of purple it down a bit. Then just put that at the bottom. And then for the clouds, because I want them to be sort of nice sunny clouds. I'm just going to have a bit of raw sienna which I'm going to put over there and a bit of quinacrinone purple and I'm just going to drop that into the clouds like this just very lightly just to give them a bit of warmth basically so they're not just bright white paper and we're going to keep that very simple we're not going to complicate things today, we're just starting out, take that around that edge. Okay, so we've got our clouds there, painted in, sketched in quite quickly, and uh, the rest of it. Right, so now we're going to paint this uh, bank, you can see the pictures up on the screen there, so you can see, but we're going to paint this area now, we want that quite dark. Um, so I don't know what should I do. Um, so I'm kind of going to add a little bit of uh, alizarin crimson to some ultramarine. Oh, there's alizarin. And to that I'm going to add a little bit of yellow and make like a really deep greeny colour. And I'm just going to but to that, to make it interesting, I'm not just going to paint it flat one colour. I'm going to add some, get some blue going and I'm going to put some blue in there just to shake it up a bit and to, so you can see the, the, the kind of the shifts within the hillside. Try and go round this. This is the part of the boat coming down the mast area. Everything might run out of control a little bit sometimes when you're doing this. Don't freak out too much about it. Yeah, you know, these are exercises really. I'm gonna put a bit of cobalt blue in there with a little bit of quinacrinone purple just at the bottom where it's cooler. And paint around the boat. It's gonna it's gonna run a little bit into the boat. Don't worry about that too much. Try and control it as best you can. But what you're gonna do is get a nice soft edge on the skyline there, uh, which is what I want. 
things. I want that to sit back a bit because that boat there, the boats are going to be the main focus of the painting. So again, a bit of blue. I just say any blue will do, as they say. I'm not too fussy. Just stick it in and see what happens. Right, then I want to move to slightly warmer colours now for the other side because I haven't got any tissue. The other side's going to be slightly warmer. So we want to... If any colours start to creep up too much, you can always... Uh, like I can see that's creeping up into that cloud there. Just soften, just, just blot it out a little bit. Stop it from moving too much. Right, so this side's going to be a bit warmer. So all I'm going to do is add a bit more yellow to that green. Maybe a bit of orange to it, because it is quite on the warm side. And then we're just going to... There's some cottages there. And I'll try to introduce it to that side. So there's a transition from the cool to the warmer. Right, and then I'll add a little bit of blue as well, just to vary it. Because what what happens with a lot of paintings is you just so people launch into one colour and they just stick with it, and they'll paint that throughout the passage, whether it be a hillside or whatever. Well, it's kind of mixing it up a little bit. What makes it interesting? There we go. That's going to run up into a bit crazily, so I'm going to have to block that bit out in a second with a bit of tissue. But just don't panic, is the word. For those of you that used to watch Dad's Army, don't, Mr. Mannering, just, just don't panic. Don't know if you remember that. Anyway, right, so we've done that little bit. So what we're into this now, eight minutes so far. So we've got that in. We've got these cottages here, which we'll come and mess about with later. Just block them in with some colour. I might just put a bit of warmth on them now. Just so, just so they're not... There we go, just like that, on the rooftops. Some of the cottages are a bit on the white. Oh, I painted white, so I won't mess about that too much. Right, now we've got some water running down the centre and some pools. I'm going to get a little bit of uh, cobalt blue for that and I'm just going to pop it in because that's reflecting the blue of the sky and then it gets a little bit darker, well a lot darker, where it picks up the hillside so I'm going to go back in and mix a really dark green for that, maybe warm it up a little bit because I think it's showing the sand at the bottom. Don't quite like what I could make that mix. There we go. Right, try something like that anyway. So this is the hillside being reflected. And what we might do is introduce, because again, see, going back to flat colour, it's a very flat colour, it's not interesting to the viewer. So we can just drop something else in there. Let's have a little bit of cooler colour, something that's going to make it okay, something like that. Play too much, right? We've got more blue over here where the sand's going to go, so we'll put some more blue in. All right, let me have a look at the picture. Just across here. You've got to remember your colours will dry lighter than lighter than um, they are now. I know, sort of twenty percent, I think it is something like that. But anyway, that's something you just get used to as you're doing it. And we'll just have. And there's kind of to take the eye down here, we'll have a little bit of blueness there. Now we're going to put our sand in, 
So I'm just going to use some raw sienna. Okay, it's quite, and a little bit of that Cronacrono gold. Just to mix my sand. No nonsense. See, I'm just using one brush size at the moment, which is a size, oh gosh, it's got to be about 10 or 12, I suppose. Probably a 10, I imagine. Just one brush, no fiddling. Mix these colours up a bit, add some cooler. Because if you add a little bit of cooler colour to it, it won't make it will sort of darken it, make it a deeper brown. And, and when you get that nice dry brush stroke, leave some of those sparkles behind. Don't sort of obliterate them all because they're useful at the end to uh, Okay, so finally we're just going to pop some sand in here. Okay, we're keeping this very simple, you know, this is a very simple approach. Right, okay, so what's that taking us 12 minutes? We've kind of obliterated the white paper almost. We've just got to think about a bit of green and blue at the back here to pick up the rocks. Yeah, there we go. Okay, I want that to dry now and then we'll come back and we'll do the next stage. Okay, then now it's dried a little bit. It's not fully dry, but it's kind of almost there. I just want to recap what we've done so far. So we kind of blocked in the sky. We, first of all, we, we misted the, board, the, the, the paper, didn't we? We just put a little bit, not, we didn't saturate it, we just misted it, okay? Then we blocked in some blue, and by misting it, okay, when we left the white for the clouds, it gave us nice natural soft edges around our clouds and made them look quite realistic, I suppose. Then I added some warm greys by using a bit of raw sienna, quinochrome purple, uh, for the uh, and a little bit of blue just for the clouds the shadows of the clouds and just mix that up I left warmer patches and cooler patches just to give it more sort of interest went to the hillside and we painted that with a mixture of uh, ultramarine uh, lemon yellow a little bit of red and then we as we worked our way down the hill we introduced more blue to mix it up and make it look good. We went warmer this side by just not putting so much blue in, just having the, the yellow and the blue together, sorry, yellow and blue together to make uh, a nice green, nice warmer green. Uh, we introduced the sand and the water down here, just sort of uh, ultramarine and cobalt, that type of stuff. Left a little bit of dry brush down here. So we've got, we've got the foundation for the painting now. Now we've got to concentrate on the boats. We've got to put those in. And that's what hopefully is going to make our painting come to life. So we won't mess about. Okay, so I'm going to go with quite a big brush again. I was using the size, I think it's a size 10. I keep saying that the, the, the number's worn off it now. So I can't see. I can't see it. But uh, I'm not good with brush sizes. I just pick up what I know I need. Um, right. Missed that little bit there, so I just want to put some colour in there um, quickly. A little bit of uh, that raw sienna, just just not no, a little bit of quinacrone purple, just uh, oh, go okay. And just through there as well. There we go. Right. So, boats. Now, the boats are kind of a bluey colour. So, that's what I'm going to, what I'm going to go with. And I'm going to use some cerulean. Blue. Mix up. Always make sure you... Well, I'm guilty of this, actually. I don't always do it. But try and mix up enough colour. Uh, because there's nothing worse than not having enough. Well, there is lots of things are worse, but it's annoying not to have enough. Right, 
and I'm going to have a little bit of cobalt blue and I'm going to put a little bit of raw sienna in there but, uh, sorry burnt sienna a little bit of burnt sienna to make a nice grey bluey grey colour which I'm going to use for the shadows on the boat so I think I'm going to paint this shadow first under there and then I'm going to go sl slightly darker as I move back. Warmer at the front, warmer here because it's warmer, the colour the colour's warmer here and then as you go back it's, uh, it gets cooler and slightly darker. Not warm enough. So that wasn't quite how I planned it but uh, once you've committed to it, you've got to kind of go with it. So I'm blowing it out a little bit. A bit of purple in there, just to make it interesting. It doesn't matter if I go over the water uh, where the anti-fouling is going to be. Because I'm going to be going over, again that, over that again in a minute, slightly darker. And we'll put another wash in at the back as well. Oh, excuse me. Right, so now I'm going to get a slightly smaller brush for the cabin. I've got my this brush here. It's an old Japanese style brush. They're ever so cheap on Amazon. <coughs> About four or five pounds, I think. Maybe a bit more. Maybe, t maybe six or seven now. But uh, when I bought it, it's lasted years. It's goat hair apparently, and they last forever. Bit of light red in there, bit of cerulean blue, sorry. Okay. So now we just want to paint the shadows on here. On the boat. Oh, got a bit of a shaky hand today. Probably that bottle of wine I had last night. Right, go there. I can take it right over the back because there's a cover here. We can work on that later. Try and leave the little sparkles of light that come and go. Try not to obliterate them all. Keep those little sparkles of light in there because you know they make it more interesting. Um, make your painting more interesting, basically. A bit, a bit of colour on there. So let's just go back to that again. I just want to reinforce that. Perfect. Well, no, not perfect. Right, now the anti fouling is a dark blue colour. So I want to put some ultramarine, I'm sorry, some cobalt blue, and then some raw sienna, burnt sienna. Sorry about that. Terrible. Make a really deep dark blue from the, towards the back and then we want to keep it slightly lighter at the front but you don't want too much water on your brush because it will just go horrible okay so let's just now it doesn't matter if it runs a bit I'm gonna go to there and then I'm gonna add some of the dirtio colour, the darker mix that we did. For the back of the boat. Something like that. Okay, there's a nice shadow that will run under that boat later and we'll pop that in in a bit. And I get a bit of ultramarine, mix in with that cobalt blue, just a touch of red to darken it down slightly. And then I'm going to paint this line in here. And let this wash around the boat still still damp, so it's kind of leaving a nice soft edge, which I kind of like. I don't want it to be a really hard, hard edge. Right, some little ropes on top of the deck area 
and for that I'm just going to literally get some raw sienna and just do a squiggle like that. That that that'll be enough for that. We don't want to do any more. Okay, and then there's a black line that runs around the top of the gunnel. It's very faint, you can hardly see it. But I'm just going to mix more raw more burnt sienna with some cobalt and then I'm just going to suggest that black line like that I'm not trying to paint it you know as it is in the picture I'm not trying to be it's too accurate it's just a suggestion okay that's all we're doing it's just a suggestion right I'm going to pop some darker colour in here. Just where the canopy is. I'll paint the canopy a bit. That's the shadow where it goes under the, you know, the, the, you know, at the back of the boat. You can see it there. I've not bothered putting the outboard on. So, well, honestly, I forgot. But uh, if you want to put the outboard back, outboard on, please do. Um, right, we're now going to put the shadow under the boat, and for that I'm going to mix um, burnt sienna and some cobalt blue. And I'm going to use various mixes of that. Maybe a bit of burnt sienna there in it as well. Just so we can pick up the warmth of the sand. bit more blue because sometimes you can okay that's it basically that's the shadow don't forget this is a very quick interpretation you know of this uh of this scene. We're trying to get it done in under what 30 odd minutes the whole painting. Um, now I'm going to just pick out some of this seaweed that's in the foreground here and I'm just going to use quite dry strokes to suggest seaweed. Things like that. Just drag your brush, flick your brush. Try not to, try to get a little bit of texture in there. You know, a bit of sparkle. I've not managed it, strangely. I've not managed it. Um, don't know why. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. But I'm going to leave that like that. Don't want to go too mad. If you, because if you go too crazy, you start obliterating everything. And uh, well, we're still going to come back and put some dot final darks in on the bike the boat to make it pop. I'll tell you what we can do, just put the sail cover in quickly. Um, just pop that in. A bit of blue. And we're just going to put a little bit of brown to darken it as we go down the back. There we go. Tidy it up under there a little bit. Right, that's fine, that'll dry. Right, we've got to do that boat at the back. I'm going to do the mast at the end when I can get my hand over the paper, um, essentially. So the other boat's very similar colour, but the, the deck is kind of cerulean bluish. I'll put cerulean blue and add a little bit of lemon yellow to it. It's quite, that's too much, but it's quite uh, a greeny blue, isn't it? So it's nice. Right. That'll do. Right, we're just going to just paint in the deck first. Then we'll come back in a minute 
then we'll just put put the shadows in. There we go. Then we're going to paint the hull, and we'll just do that with some um, a very pale wash of uh, a dirty blue that I've got there. Again, leaving those bits of sparkle if you can around the edges. And then we'll paint in the, the, the anti fouling. A bit of burnt sienna. And again, I'm going to use a little bit of cobalt blue. And I'm going to have it quite soft there. I don't mind if it runs up a bit. Need a bit more water on my brush. Go down. It's just like colouring in. Let's make that a bit more interesting. Let's wet it out a bit. Too dry. Okay. Go to the back. The stern. I watch loads of uh, videos on YouTube of sailing. I used to sail years ago. Don't anymore. I never had a boat, but I used to go with a friend who had a boat. I used to love it. Right. Now I'm just going to paint the. Uh, the line around the top here. Again it's still wet. As long as the paint you're putting into this is quite thick then it shouldn't run too much. There we go, just suggested that. And we'll just put put the shadow underneath the boat and I'll make that slightly bluer than this one because it's further away. Do -do. That'll do. Right, so we just got to wait for that to dry and we'll come back and do the, the final touches. Okay, we're getting to the end now. Um, almost dry, not quite, but we're, we're going to finish it. I don't want to make the video too long. Um, just going to paint the uh, cells at the back. On this one, make it a bit darker. Actually, let's put a bit of blue in there because it, because it's a dark background, and I have to go so dark to make it stand out. So what I'm going to do is put a bit of blue in there. That makes it stand out a bit. All right. And we've got these railings that come down here. So I'm just adding all the little bits now, all the extras. Just suggesting them. I'm not going to town. It is just a sketch. Um, we'll just paint that darker section at the back of the boat. The uh, dark, darker area across the stern of this one. Just so we get that difference. It goes across there like that. And it goes down. I'll watch what's got my head and where the camera. Something like that. Okay, leave that like that. Then we have. Oh yeah, we just paint that a bit darker, just here, because I want to get more of a rounded shape to the boat. So I'm just going to paint it a fraction darker at the stern, just like that. Just that, that's just a little bit of um, cobalt blue with burnt sienna. I'm just going to soften that edge at the front just to get that feeling of depth. When it dries, it should be okay. And again, I want to do the same with this one just under the stern there. 
that comes down maybe just under there as well bit of light that's better soften it slightly now we'll put the windows in the boat and again I'm just because I'm keeping this very simple palette I'm just going to use uh, cobalt blue and some burnt sienna I've got on the palette a bit more just to make a dark grey blue and we'll just pop the window in the boat like that one stroke and we've got a couple of windows on this one and we'll just pop that one that one in that one in we've got some darker details on top of the cabin these are all little things that perhaps when the video is finished if you do the painting you can use your observation to uh, to pick them out um, problem is I haven't got time but uh, because it'll be too, the video will be too long for you um, so just gonna, there's a bit few ropes hanging off the back I'm just going to suggest those like that and there's a, a rope coming off the front again I'd spend more time on this generally and we've got um, again I would probably use a bit because they're quite light, light the ropes I, if I was doing it as a real painting if you like I'd use a bit of gouache because I could get a much lighter rope but I'm going to go with it dark there we go now we want to paint the cottages oh, actually hang on we'll just paint this back here this rope coming off this one I'll do and we can have there's another one coming down and it's just little flicks it's just suggestions it's nothing too much right just put the cottages cottages in at the back of the scene and again they're just we don't want to take the eye too much go too much detail back there so we're just going to paint those really suggest them um, just to paint the roof thin that's too dark I'm gonna go dark now can't help it well, um, yeah another roof there and we've got some bits going on over here I don't know what they are right so again like I say it's just a suggestion and there's a few windows on the cottages the pattern. and again I'm not painting windows as such I'm just because they're too small just suggesting little errors and then a bit of burnt sienna mixed with a bit of the dirty cut off the palette and I'm just going to suggest there's a, like a little sea wall area here that comes across like that I don't do much more there because I don't want to take the viewer's eye too far back right I've got to put the uh, mast in now so I tend to turn the painting on its side when I do that I get a stick like so I get some colour and I'm just going to use a sort of a warmish dirty colour so I don't put my head over the camera and I use a stick because I've got very steady arms very steady hands and I literally just go down like so and we'll do the same for this one I get a nice warmish colour Make sure you get it. You, you observe the angle of the uh, of the mast because it's pretty crucial that I don't always get it right. Maybe we will not get it right today. But anyway, that'll do. And we've got the uh, the stay that comes down the bow of the boat. Just pop that in again. You know, it is literally. I'm not painting it as I see it on the page. I'm just literally suggesting it because we're not. We're just going for an overall impression of the scene. Because if you're going to start painting it like you would a, all right, it's only a bit, bit of colour. Actually, I want more blue on there. 
it's because it's this paint is just too small it would never look right anyway some of that I don't know it's just marking it in um, oh, not great so this what happens when you're doing it for people on camera right have that down like that okay we're gonna have a make sure I've got this there's a few little stays coming down here I'm just gonna suggest those with a free hand again down here and at the stern of the boat don't have to be too accurate with those again I know they're ver they're very light in the uh, in the photograph but we ain't doing it like that because uh, there we go Oops, a bit too far okay right basically on a call it a day there so in just over half an hour we've we captured quite a nice scene and we've got some light in the painting and that was the main objective in this uh, now there's lots of other things we could be doing to enhance this painting now if we want to make it a, a more detailed painting but as I say I haven't got time now because that wasn't the object that, you know that wasn't the object of the exercise basically I might just <laughs> so this is where you can't help fiddling suggest a little bit of different foliage back there by by darkening the green in places on the hillside just add some little shrubs or something just to make it look a bit more interesting but that is going to be it i could work here a little bit make that more interesting and i could do more there's definitely more work that could be done around this area of the boat and that basically is the focal point so when you do if you do a painting try and concentrate on this area here and really you know work that and uh, make that something but uh, okay so i'm glad you i hope you enjoyed the uh, the exercise okay and i hope you got something for it from it um my facebook page is under the um there's a link in the description for my facebook page if you want to sort of have a go and then post your paintings on my facebook page you're more than welcome to i'd love to uh, see what you did and uh, how it went for you but uh, anyway Thanks so much for watching and uh, happy painting and bye for now.